Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's so heartening to that so many of you have logged in for this uh, special webinar. Uh, it is being done under the ages of ISPATH. We have one more after this, which Dr. Raju Saitya will address to you. And now uh, we will be talking on the role of obstetricians and gynecologists in stem cell banking. Because this is where uh, you hear so many things, but you do not know whether you're doing the right thing or not. So let me try to clarify some, some of the doubts uh, which people might be having in stem cell. So why should we be having a webinar on stem cell banking is the first question which comes to my mind or to anybody's mind. Now, when we study this graph, as you see of the Indian OBGYN survey, you see how less is the information about stem cell banking to all of us. So though we know there is something like cord blood banking, but we are not very sure on what exactly it is. So the information, complete information is very less. So what we are going to try and do today is uh, do some basics of stem cell. And uh, then uh, need of stem cell during our lifetime. What are the indications in modern day medicine? What and why to bank? umbilical cord, placenta cord, everything, so many things you get confused because do we all will need donor stem cells? What are the challenges and what are the innovative solutions and what is the banking and retrieving of these stem cells? And we'll try to conclude with some uh, take home messages. So let's start with the basics, basics of stem cells. So we know that a single cell, a multi uh, pluripotent cell is a stem cell. Now these cells can replicate themselves or they form the other cells from it. Like RBCs, like neurons, like muscles. So every cell can be formed from these cells. So these are stem cells. And why are stem cells necessary in the body? Because they help us to restore the normal body function. So whenever our cells get damaged, they will replace the damaged cells and they repair the damaged or the affected cells. So those who have good stem cells will heal themselves much faster, much better uh, in, uh, in this thing. So we need stem cells for healing. So we need bone marrow stem cells was first identified in 1956 in New York and it was used for treatment of leukemia, the own and donor don donated by patients twin sibling. Then Stem cells from peripheral blood is being used since 1986 and the popularly known as BMT, the source, uh, they can be autologous, that means 100% from uh, the transplant and they can be allogenic, that means donor stem cell uh, are used. And then of course we can use uh, cord blood cells which were first used in 1988 for the famous case of Fantini's anemia which we all mentioned in our all our top talks. A second child was designed, uh, it's called as a designer baby, to save the first sibling from Fanconi's uh, cell anemia. And this showed that the, it became very popular because it is painless. You don't have to go into the bone marrow. You don't have to collect the blood of the patient. It is from the cord blood, which is all thrown. It is less stringent matching. So the matching will be available much easier and readily available because you're there. So these are known as, uh, there are two terms which are used, allogenic or autogenic. Now when we use, when we say allogenic, what do we mean? We mean the autologous cells from your own body. And when we mean allogenic, what do we mean? We need that we've got the stem cells donated by other human being, uh, which is matching to the best. And then we use those for, for the treatment. The next question which everyone asks is, will there be a need of stem cells during my lifetime or during our lifetime? So what is the need? Now look at this data, look at the United States. Every three minutes, someone is diagnosed with blood cancer. Every nine minutes, someone is dying of blood cancer. The Leukemia Lympho uh, Society says so. And uh, 160 people dying of cancer every day. When we look at India, the source of ICMR, you see that lymph cord malignancies stand here at 10 as compared to tobacco related at 28 
and central nervous set two. So here we are where uh, the blood cancers are there. So and if you see the line below, one in two hundred and seventeen will undergo blood cell transplantation by the age of seventy years. So that much requirement would be there. So probably you and me, anyone could be requiring it. So presently, what do we have? We have eighty approved medical conditions which can be treated by cord blood sampling. These are blood diseases, immune disorders, metabolic disorders, some tumors, some bone marrow failures, and there are over the 50 years, over 13 lakh transplantations have occurred. 50,000 transplants have been done annually, and there are some 500 plus clinical trials and conditions in the future which should be treated by stem cells would be cerebral palsy, autism, diabetes, trauma, traumatic brain injury. is hearing losses all those so look at the potential uh, which we have now when when we look when we talk about stem cells it can be collected anywhere but right now the treatment is available only at very few centers at new delhi as you can see about 7 8 hospitals at kolkata about 5 hospitals at mumbai about 5 6 hospitals at chennai and we at agra at our centers have also started the stem cell therapy and specially now trying to get or enter the study for stem cells from placenta for covid um, 19 uh, use of covid 19 this is experimental which i ask so stem cell banking getting ready for the future how we get for the future with uh, with this banking Uh, which is going to be available or not available to us so let's see now 30 years of history cord blood has been banked the first cord blood transplants are these people as you see and as i told you fanconi's anemia matthew and alison uh, were designed to save matthews and uh, the cord blood from alison was used to treat the fanconi's an anemia for her sibling elder sibling and look at them both of them are so healthy Uh, and they have survived this dangerous lethal disease so that is how it is so what do, what what uh, means you have a disease you inject stem cells the stem cell will go to the diseased area it will repair regenerate or replace that part and stem cells are stored as comparable with medicines so are you prepared to change from pill to cell the new outlook of medicine is going to be cell therapy and not pill therapy so we are moving towards a uh, cell therapy rather than a pill therapy so pros and cons of umbilical cord stem cell banking now advan uh, advantages are many because it's very simple to take there is no risk to the donor this is a waste blood which gets thrown away in the placenta you can store it for long long years and uh, up to maybe 20 years 30 years immediately available because it can be used immunological uh, in nature high proliferative rate because we want to make the cells high concentration of stem stem cells in this and younger cells with longer telomeres uh, so that age it is not be aging cells and there is a low incidence of any viral contamination when you use stem cells because it's just come come out the disadvantage is the cell dose so probably we need more and we'll just tell you how we can do that and it's a one time supply so you've just collected the 200 ml of blood cord blood or placental blood once and then once it once you use it it's gone it's finished and potential delayed enfranchisement time so that that could be one of the reasons so how do we do it we have the when we cut the cord near clamp in cut the cord near the uh, baby you have the umbilical vein with sterile syringe you inject it into the umbilical vein and you get the blood flowing into the stem cell bag and gently the bag has to be moved up and down so that it does not clot and it mixes well and once it stops coming the placenta is removed and you can still prick it at the placental site of and get few more now so cord blood banking can be a public banking or a family banking you get the blood collected and you donate it to the society so way or it could be discarded it could be unrelated transplant or could be related transplant and a family bank is that your stem cells are stored for you and can be used for 
stem cell therapy in your siblings and or it could be stored for years and years without any use or it could go back into the community banking or the stem cell which ideally we, we would want to but there are some technical problems uh, in that so we all need stem cell donors yes we do need stem cell donors because uh, only 10 percent of them are the conditions which will require now see if a patient has a genetic disease and a baby is born with a genetic disease and you have stored the blood if you use that same blood for that patient you are transmitting the same genes back into it so here is a, a problem and the probability of using the own cord blood stem cell during the entire lifetime for that baby is less than one percent and if there is a genetic disease we will try to use a stem cell from the bank or the community bank rather than that own blood so baby's own cord blood stem cells can be used only in about 10 percent of the conditions and less than one percent chance of the baby getting the blood 90 percent of the blood conditions require stem cell from a healthy matching donor and that is what is it so obviously you will say then why collect it we will come to that so how do you find a healthy matching donor well you don't uh, match the da hla and hla could be three by six or four by six that's what we need where siblings will match 25 percent chance of getting a full match in your siblings half of your hla markers are inherited from the father and half from the match in their family so that's another uh, another problem which you have where, where you'll uh, uh, need the public now what's failing a donor stem cell degrees now the challenges for donor registry have very few number of voluntary donors listed in the Indian registries. So about 40 to 45 percent of donors are unavailable when you require. Those who are registered when you call them, oh sorry, I cannot. I'm here. I'm there. So they make excuses. So till the the largest Indian bone marrow registry has about half lakh donors, and this has been able to facilitate only 62 transplants per year. So see the mismatch. So this is where we need a public banking and probably we need more of cord blood, uh, use of cord blood. Uh, now when you do a public cord blood bank, the advantages are great. You have a bank which has huge amount of it. The problem is the high cost of processing uh, the, the sample. So someone has to pay for it. Now the public banks like G1 and one in Kolkata all are we're struggling with the finances. Who will fund? So it is the government who should come forward and have a public bank. Or it is private bank. You bank your baby's blood in the, or you tell your patient to bank in the private bank and then use that for in the community storage bank. So it is prepared, plus you are guaranteed that you will get. So till date, the largest public cord blood has done only six donor cord blood stem cells per year. Very less, very less. We need much more uh, than it because. Uh, people have to uh, they will be needing it so what ladies and gentlemen is the ideal solution so ideal solution is that is a community banking the community banking is the ultimate solution but it is very very difficult very difficult if i say i deliver five babies a day and some bank should take and i will give the cord blood to all all of them that bank needs a lot of money to process each one of them and store each one of them so someone has to pay for that and when it is required, the, the patient who, if it is done like this, will have to pay a huge amount of sum to use that, almost about to the tune of 10 to 15 lakhs. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's a big catch-22 situation. So what we should do is we should have a benefit of both private and public banking. So all the blood banks who are functioning in India, we should request them, here is my baby's blood bank, blood, cord blood, you can collect it. I will pay for it, whatever I have to pay, but I should be given to unlimited access to the public community bank. Then the solution will work. So we will have enough uh, number of blood stored or cord blood stored.
how does it work you get unlimited matching donors free plus your blood free so if you get uh, if people go for a common pool sharing so it's like a pool sharing so baby sibling parents grandparents all can be held or guaranteed to get a blood uh, cord blood or stem cell from a cord blood from a community bank so private public uh, banking mixture uh, needs to be done and that would be probably better now these are some of the criteria which a community bank should fulfill the total nucleated cell count should be good the total cd4 cell count should be good the cd34 cell viability should be good should be sterile bacteria and fungus free there should be no hemoglobinopathies the maternal blood infections disease testing has to be done maternal blood sample collection infant sample infant history all those criteria have to be uh, fulfilled before the blood is uh, released to a community bank now which cells and tissues can be commercially banked in india again a very very big uh, uh, question and again uh, the many companies coming say i am the best i am the best i can bank everything i can bank only cord blood only cord blood is allowed only tissue is allowed everything is allowed so that uh, is there so when we go and see the latest icmr guidelines now say mesenchymal cells are allowed so they have the potential to differentiate between bones cartilage mesenchymal cells are known as universal donor cells unlike cord blood they do not require matching so the donor is it's safe to receive therapy free from mcs and uh, the therapy uh, is used to suppress autoimmune disease in the others and this advisory came from icmr that the uh, banks are allowed only to bank cord blood only cord blood and not the menstrual blood or the tooth extract or the adipose tissue or the dental pulp but but there is there are now uh, advisories and there is a gadget from the government which allows placental and cord tissues but i am not sure about the blood uh, from or the tooth or the so this is how we do this is um, you can see i've just finished a cesarean section and i've just taken uh, the the assistant who's uh, who's just punctured the umbilical vein and you see a good amount of cord blood has been harvested from this uh, from this baby on on both the sides you can see here and then this is going to be handed over now this is in covid time that's why i'm i'm in my ppe and a double sterile suit so what what uh, things are followed the patient has to enroll uh, so has to be counseled by the gynecologist by the counselor then the sample connection is done by the gynecologist during a normal delivery or a cesarean section it is packed properly in the packages which are available which are given to the gynecologist or to the patient who brings at the time of delivery then it is transported to where the storage is so like chennai gurgaon bombay where the three or four labs are operating from and then these are tested for every infectious disease as i showed you the list for the nucleate count and all then they are cryo preserved or they are frozen in these huge cryo preservers and then they can be kept cryo frozen so whenever you need it there is a retrieval request given a medical concierge will take it to the areas where it is available the treatment is available bombay calcutta chennai bangalore and even to us in agra uh, hla typing is done to see the match again a donor stem cell search is done uh, so we may need to add some donor uh, to it and, or if it is not matching because uh, these companies are now offering you that if your doesn't match then we will give you a donor free of cost uh the ngs genetic testing on every stem cell unit so it is a very safe transplant program and the other test and then it is shipped worldwide to the transplant hospital and that hospital transplants it either iv or uh, to the organ whichever so the obstetrician and patient counseling become the key point to address in uh, umbilical cord banking so the patient is with you as the patient is delivered by you antenatal by you you will be the only one to guide them or tell them the obstetrician it is now recommended by iap so iap came out with a statement umbilical cord uh, banking consensus statement of the indian academy of pediatrics and pub they said that public cord blood banking should be promoted over private banking yes that is exactly what we are saying or a bank should be preferred which is going to offer you 
public um, uh, stem cells also if your don't match and the iib requirement for the obgyn they also come public cord blood banking autologous uh, use autologous cord blood cord uh, blood shortage if it is there then you can mix up with the yeah, with the donor and the private cord blood banking is recommended only if they are going to uh, tell you or help you with the public bank also so the take home message or the checklist for educating the expecting parents is that it is now a proven therapy for almost 80 disorders it is allowed to be collected right uh, right now according to one order only am like to say according to another gadget even the placenta and the cord is also allowed but uh, it's better that you go for cord blood what is not recommended is only private banking so you should ask the bank that you should be giving me a community banking or encourage public banking with my private bank uh, blood sample the sample collection is very safe the bank's accreditation need to be tested and you can ask for an authentication certificate or a license certificate from them and they should be having a facility to store and sustain so let's take a more responsible attitude we obstetricians and explain the pros and cons and the benefits and let the patient finally decide it's a patient has to decide now what is the problem is that the parents have no money nothing is proven there are no guidelines in india icmr has banned drug quality of cord blood is very low these are the questions which you are going to ask me right now and uh, of course if you know uh, these these are the these are just the myths and we can all solve these and it is all uh, been solved there are ministry of health uh, notifications gadgets gadget notifications licenses which you must check with the cord blood company you are banking with and there is a complete list of 80 approved indication so there is a national guideline for stem cell research by icmr and these are the 80 diseases where cord blood banking and cord blood therapy is approved as of now for experimental yes we are also testing for many experimental disease now what is this haplo cord blood transplantation now haplo is that uh, the match sibling is better of course but 70% of the chance you don't find a match if you don't find a match what to do unmatched unrelated match donor next best option but then also not all patients find a match then the cord blood has, even if it is 4 by 6 hla matched and readily available but has a low gv hd and a low volume and a delayed infringement and increased infection and a moderate uh, relapse so here is where your cord blood which you stored is subjected to cord blood expansion plus from the public bank the cord blood is added so you have the best of both worlds what we call as the haplo uh, cord transplantation and which which uh, advantages is that you get a lot of neutrophils you will get uh, the lower gvd due to usc graft excellent disease control half the cell dose is also acceptable focus on better matched so you can go up to 6 by 8 outcomes are similar as a fully matched uh, sibling transplant now here is a technique where you can expand expand the cord blood transplant plantation so this this technique by adding drugs is also being used to expand your yield of the and this is in phase 1 2 uh, trial studies of stem cell transplantation using single cord blood unit and expanded in vivo with nicotinamide and you see that the trials have shown that the expansion is really good and this is as of october to then it's all ready for the trials now and all going in under clinical trials now so cord blood is better than bone marrow for blood cancers that is now yeah, we have to understand that that's point number 1 and cord blood use in regenerative medicines much more look at the first graph the brain injury look at the uh, other graphs all the diseases and now even in obgyn for thin endometrium uh, premature ovarian failures for endometrial uh, asherman syndrome all the this we can have processed the cord blood stem cells and then you put it in 
how long can the cord blood flow the commonest question asked right now 30 years and the latest uh, retrieve after 30 years has shown good and we can go to youtube and watch a lot of videos on patients and parents guide uh, by the cord blood foundation how long your cord blood can be stored but it is very easy to store it for a very long, very long time what is going on these last few slides will show you the cord blood treatment for brain injury for autism and where these cases here excellent results cord blood uh, used for cerebral palsy cerebral palsy using the pay child's own cord blood and see the cerebral pal palsy child has improved so much and is walking and playing and uh, doing everything so the take home message this last slide again which i showed you cord blood is proven therapy for almost 80 blood related disorders only umbilical cord blood is allowed to be used for treatment but in experimental stage the cord and the amniotic membrane and the placental tissue is also being used it's experimental and uh, you have to apply for it if you're ready it can be used only private banking should not be done so a bank should offer you public plus private with a community banking facilities the sample collection is safe any obstetrician can do it who is doing cesarean section is just an iv injection and it and you should check on the bank's accreditation and experience before you go ahead for court my last slide is which i just got today uh, from israel and from america because of this covid disease covid 19 um, terrible terrible uh, people dying so in us and israel they have uh, now uh, generated stem cells from the placenta and this may save from the babies the corona victims in new jersey as it is being tried and also it is being tried as a therapy and as a treatment in uh, israel so here is what stem cells can do to the newer diseases where we still don't have an answer it's very very experimental is a news of only today it is not yet proven but it is experimental seriously ill patients the baby's placenta can be used to make trans uh, cells stem cells and then use them for therapy thank you very much thank you very much for attending this we of course uh, know that knowing is not enough we must apply and willing is not enough but we must uh, do uh, what uh, what we have to do so uh, i end this and i am open for any questions which you might be having uh, for me So I have a few people who are just saying hello, hello Ganesh Paswal, hello Ashma Sood for attending this and uh, Renuka Mittal, hello Prerna, all of you, hello, good, good, I hope uh, you're all uh, safe in these difficult times, but be ready, it's a pandemic, it's still going to hit us, uh, maybe India is uh, in a better situation, but we are, it's too early to say that. Two more weeks if we remain at this level then we probably uh, have um, controlled this pandemic but we are not very sure it just might go up to community spread and then the mitigation uh, would be very very difficult so it's follow the lockdown follow learning on digital let this is a new experiences because for the next years conferences are going to be very very delayed and very very different Okay, so I have, is, I have a uh, question, can we harvest stem cells from our own blood and bang them? Well, your blood has stem cells, but to get a good amount of stem cells from blood is not very easy. So we harvest the stem cells from your sternal bone, sternum, or from your iliac crest, which is the best. So we can take out the bone marrow from the iliac crest and then process them. Unfortunately, processing stem cells is still not very clear guidelines on it so we you we are you can use take out a sample and use it as it is so that's uh, a prepare and use it 
yes uh, you have to have a good internet connection then only you get a very clear screen. thank you everyone joining i think the voice most of the people can yes divya god can be used for cerebral palsy and autism yes that was my last slide it is experimental but uh, few cases has shown that it helps even traumatic uh, brain injuries even uh, brain cerebral uh, vascular accidents paralysis uh, rejo spinal cord is cut rejuvenated you can inject stem cells the person who used to uh, act as superman he in during one of the shooting he got the spinal cord severed and uh, stem cells were used and it regenerated our own uh, minister one of the ministers jogi he had stem cell he had a spinal cord injury and stem cells were used to repair the spinal cord so we have experiences we have uh, on treating them yes there is a list of 80 hematological disorders you can uh, search that list on icmr guideline and you can search that list in google and it will give you what 80 diseases or any stem cell company which comes to you just ask them to give you that list of the 80 diseases where it can be used uh parvati negi yes ideally everyone should preserve their baby's umbilical cord blood now because of the expense which the people feel they are not because we don't have free public banking wherever there was free public banking in america and germany has not worked because to process a stem cell collection after collection to process that and keep it is expenses expensive so some amount of the money has to be paid uh, by the patient herself for that baby but ideally yes all babies should have umbilical banking all babies should have it free the government should make it free so which bank should i recover uh, recommend well sonal uh, uh, i am not going to there are some six banks but uh, to tell you i am banking with only two banks one is life cell and one is relabs the others are are probably as good enough but these two have offered me public banking and these two have offered me uh, therapy and these two have so that's my personal choice but uh, you can bank with anyone who you feel is good and who who you feel will get, give you uh, good services and uh, good uh, good treat common diseases yes leukemia all the blood disorders all the autoimmune disorders they are all in the list uh, dr deepan parekh they are all in the list uh, to treat uh, where we can use stem cells and for siblings fankinis anemia for parents uh, or grandparents haplo 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 mixture double so use the babies the grandchild's blood plus the public banking uh, dr preeti nigam yes it it should be a part of the counseling uh, in the antenatal period and you can always uh, mention the, in your antenatal card patient counsel for cord blood uh, submit and explained about the advantages and disadvantages but the final choice is there so let let them take the final choice uh, on whether they want to or not you cannot force them because it has got a cost and it has got a commercial angle so that probably is there any public sector banks in india two banks tried only public sector one was called jeevan by the government of india and one was uh, in calcutta but both of them are struggling very very hard because of the finances so no one to fund them so they are all stuck there i wish the government would fund and we would get huge amount of cord blood stored uh, stored uh, in all the deliveries which occur in the government medical college in the private any particular history to be taken before doing this well um, history of genetic disorders so if there are genetic disorders then we don't use the patient but then you still uh, advise them to store the blood cells uh, the cord blood because then you are uh, in a public private blood because then if you buy from a private blood bank and you have not stored with them then the cost goes up to 15 to 20 lakhs
to get a matched blood for you but if you stored with them the cost would be much lesser so that uh, that is what uh, is the advantage of public private bank uh some v has asked not the full name sir i have met a company who don't have a dcgi license for cord tissue collection and storage should i opt for such a company now as per my uh, knowledge right now uh, there has to be no separate license for the tissue collection i might be wrong i'm not i'm not very sure about it but uh, yes it is experimental cord tissue and placenta because it might give you a lot more diseases list increase so there is a gadget notification um, you whatsapp your number I, i'll send those papers to you and you can ask the company whether they have those papers or not sir uh, dr arti gupta is asking what will you advise to a patient she should go in for stem cell preservation we have uh, or at the booking time 24 25 weeks one counseling session for all the patients uh, that there is a stem cell uh, option to store your baby's cord blood it so it is come only one chance at the delivery you cannot it is lost after that so one counseling session is done and then they and then we give them a list of the cord blood companies which are available and they they are free to talk to all of them free to uh, choose any one of them and free to negotiate whatever price uh, with any one of them we will whoever they choose they will provide them the collection box the collection box the patient brings at the time of delivery and we do the collection and then it is collected and goes to the company so commercially the doctor is not involved anywhere it is in between the company and the patient any public sector bank there was a uh, jeevan and one calcutta uh bank but uh, they are not doing well what is the senior legal it is absolutely legal there is no illegality in um, storing your baby's cord blood cell it, it is legal it is authorized it is uh, it is a way of treatment for 80 plus diseases uh, which is there in case of low blood volume community may yes dr prashant jain if you have low blood volume you still store that with a bank who will give you a choice of community banking also so if whenever required and out of that low blood if the uh, cells nucleated cells are less or cd factors are less then of course you will be given a haplo uh, dual transfusion uh, for your patient it uh, can or cannot be used in thalassemia no, yes it can be sir i have met a company who don't have a dgci license yes uh, dgcis licenses some people have lost the audio and video i don't know why here the signal is very good so renuka bittal can we advise our patients for banking during corona times absolutely it has been shown uh, in china in china on the 18 20 patients which delivered during the corona times the cord blood amniotic fluid placenta amniotic membrane all were tested and corona virus was not seen in any out of the tissue there is one report which has come just day before yesterday which has said that there might be a corona virus uh, in that so we are not very sure if they can do it there is if the patient is uh, covid negative there she has no virus she has no virus then it can be easily so dr akansha is asking there is no such wide criteria in india for preservation of stem cells as compared to foreign countries yes because one the awareness amongst obstetricians is less uh, we do not uh, advocate to everyone we feel it is expensive patient feels it's expensive in some places it might be more than the delivery or the even the cesarean cost so those uh, those are the issues which are there but then if you tell them counsel them that if she if your baby gets blood cancer the expenses will go up into 20 25 30 lakhs and here storage for a few thousand cost of maintenance dr ashma so the collection storage maintenance cost has to be negotiated with the bank they will probably give it for 10 years and then take maintenance or you can have various installment basis with them or anything 
in prevention of gestational diabetes stem cell use no not yet uh, it is being tried in the use of diabetes so if the patient has had gestational diabetes and becomes diabetic after delivery she can be treated by stem cells so that that is what is there dr arthi is asking another question if not advising stem cell uh, no it is not negligence uh, of not advising because it is not yet an essential part of antenatal care so you can just write patient counseled for stem cells advised uh, uh, and following it is not a negligence to it is it equally useful for siblings dr venkateshwar rao yes uh, siblings uh, you will of course they'll have to go for matching and usually it will be a 4 by 6 or a 3 by 6 so even if it is a 3 by 6 or a 4 by 6 you might be lucky to get a 6 by 8 match also so it could match now dr ganesh in twins we must store both one one twin uh, storage is good enough uh, because the twins come a little earlier the placenta is less so you might have a little less uh, blood in uh, in collection so for that to increase the yield maybe yes you can take from the both so that's that's again up to you but one is enough i think one one storage is enough can be used for family members yes it can be used for parents grandparents uncles aunties everyone blood relation more chances of matching better non blood relation chances are lesser so it has to be hla matched it is a transplant so it has has to go and transplant match that is why we say that bank with a bank which has which offers you community banking also so that that is there ah uh, dr shamiksha few doctors have negative perception of stem cell banking and they don't recommend it that's a doctor choice there is a lack of awareness as i just told told you there was a study done where we, uh, you see that the whole huge part the doctors are lacking in awareness about the banking so first the doctors have to get convinced that this is a treatment which uh, will work and then then only they will be able to community bank private bank there is no only community bank so there are private banks which offer you community service also so to choose that bank previous genetic history needs to go in the stem cell banking yes so once you're taking the history a complete i, I said in my answer a uh, whole complete history of genetic diseases as to then it is done once the, before releasing a full ngs is done a genetic screen is done genetic sequencing is done before the blood is released so that uh, that uh, is is there any other questions any other comments i hope you all have liked people have liked i hope i have been able to give you a little bit of uh, our personal experience and also some awareness on what is needed uh, in stem cell banking and with cord blood for blood cell so this is one more question deepak parik chances of getting a match in community banking is fair enough yes it is fair enough that is why we recommend that it should be both uh if there are no genetic history should we go for preservation yes because uh, it is not only for genetic diseases it's for blood dis uh, diseases lymph uh, lymph myo uh, lymphopathy is uh, blood cancers um, failures all that okay dr ratna have we ever used uh, bank sample for our patients in uh, we have been banking since now uh, almost 15 years i think so two patients have gone for uh, banking two patients have gone to uh, bombay now two patients currently are undergoing therapy at agra also the processed community bank sample has come from uh, uh, bombay and uh, we are the our therapist are uh, have injected it here yeah, one is for diabetes and one is for uh, cerebral brain brain disorders so we have used it here but uh, how they will improve only time will tell this is this is just since last year we have started the therapy here
see there is no community dr vaishali joshi there is no community banking at all uh, only community banking so you have to choose a bank which is giving you community services like uh, you bank with a bank privately so you paid but if required they will give you from the community also so that is what is what uh, uh, is required from the bank without counseling if we suddenly require at some remote place how to go about it dr deepak sirvastav if you require stem cells for any treatment you have to approach the uh, stem cell companies and these stem cell companies will uh, take your sample and will request your brothers sisters and also to give samples to harvest their stem cells from their iliac crest and if that matches the best match from a bank from a cord blood bank or from your um, brothers and sisters that stem cell will be used for the treatment so yes even if you have not banked and if if i get a disease i have not banked my children's blood only my grandchildren's blood is being banked so either i use that or i go for a community bank who has given it and they will uh, provide me with a hla matched stem cell which which can be used for my treatment success rate is very very good especially in blood disorders uh, lots and lots of studies you can google the success rate uh, on various disorders some sorts of cancers are very aggressive and they will of course fail so we cannot promise 100% success no treatment but definitely it is much better than a medical or a pill therapy or a injectable therapy definitely yes dr sneha methwani uh, success with stem cell therapy can't is going and it's going to improve much much more uh, with newer disease especially if we get a treatment uh, from stem cell from diabetes cerebral palsy autism what more do we do it we are disease which had no treatment injecting into pancreas alzheimers things like that all all could be the future so thank you very much thank you life cell for hosting this uh, wonderful session and lovely questions to all of you uh, we will keep you updated on thank you uh, is coming uh, whenever it is coming do join us for future webinars this is the future the all academics for the next 6 months at least or maybe a, a year will all be on uh, digital platform as i see Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful. And I thank all the attendees to share such um, so much of time. So uh, stay safe, stay home, stay safe, and uh, thank you once again, doctor, for such a wonderful session.